All right, y'all, we're approaching the trade deadline and we're approaching it really, really quickly. Um, there's been no significant trades yet, except for maybe Carlos Santana, but that was like a long time ago. Trades looking really good, by the way. Um, but there have been heated talks so far. Juan Soto seems to be going somewhere really soon. Um, I think it's either San Diego or St. Louis. I'd like to see him in San Diego because, for one, I want to see a Tatis Soto duo, and I also want to see AJ Preller somehow find a way to overpay for Juan Soto. It's not easy to overpay for Juan Soto. That was a stutter. Um, but AJ Preller, he'll he'll do it somehow. Like I don't know how he does all these things, but like he gave up Ty France and Andres Munoz for uh, what was it, Austin Nola. So, I want to see how that trade goes. I want to see how San Diego severely overpays for a guy who's probably a top five player in baseball for the last five, five years, three years, since 2019 at least. Uh, I don't even know how long he's been in the league, to be honest. Um, but also, Wilson Contreras, he just left his last game, like, hugging everyone. I thought a trade was going to be made today, but nothing yet. The Cubs do have a day off tomorrow, so it won't be awkward unless he doesn't get traded tomorrow. Like, imagine saying goodbye to all your teammates. You have this, like, special moment after the game. And then two days later, you're like, hey, y'all, I'm still here. Um, so I'd expect Contreras to be traded before the day after tomorrow or tomorrow for you guys, maybe, depending on how fast I can um, edit this. Um... So yeah, and funny enough, from what I've been reading, the Astros are slight favorites to land Contreras, and they're also favorites, not even slight favorites, favorites to land Josh Bell. Now, do I think both of this is going to happen? I don't know. We have a pretty shallow farm system. I don't know if we can afford both players, but if there's a guy I trust to do it, it's going to be James Click. James Click says he's going to be really aggressive this offseason, offseason trade deadline. And I expect him to do great things. Um, if he lands both guys, I won't be surprised. If he doesn't land either of them and finds some random diamond in the um, rough, I won't be surprised either. Last year, he traded away Miles Straw, our starting center fielder, and we got Yiner Diaz and Phil Maton out of it. Great trade. I trust James Click no matter what happens this offseason. Off season. Why do I keep saying offseason? This trade deadline. And honestly, I have a few ideas of my own. For Wilson Contreras, I've given a trade proposal before, and I'm going to stick closer to it. I want Corey Lee on that. I want Jose Siri on that. Um, and maybe we'll just add Tyler Whitaker just in case. He hasn't been too promising, but he's still very, very young in his career. We just drafted Drew Gilbert, so we don't really need Tyler Whitaker, but he does have a lot of promise. Um, he was drafted in the third round because the Astros didn't have a first or second, but he was ranked a lot higher, and a big reason why he was drafted lower was because he was coming out of high school, so, you know, he's really, really young, um, and when you're drafting a high schooler, you're going to have to pay a lot more. You got to pay above slot to get them out of their commitment, and that's what we did with um, Tyler Whitaker, and we could send him to Chicago. Whitaker, Lee, Siri, Chicago, Wilson Contreras, and you know what? Maybe we could add some stuff, make it an Ian Happ um, combo as well, but we don't really need to. Um, the reason why I put Corey Lee on this is because he's our number one ranked um, catching prospect. I think he's our number one ranked prospect as well. Um, and if you look at fan graphs, there aren't a lot of catching prospects ahead of him, um, and everyone else that's ahead of him in the catching department is on a team that's either not going to give him a up, Ooh, that's stutter. Um, he's on a team that's either not going to give him up or he's on a team that's not looking to get a catcher. Um, for example, the Mets. They need a catcher. They're not going to give up Francisco Alvarez. Um, Dodgers. Diego Cartaya, I think that's how you say it. They're not looking for a catcher. They have Will Smith. In fact, Dodgers, you trying to send Cartaya over here? Um, but yeah, so I think Corley's a good option. Six years of control. Um, you get a new catcher after flushing out your old one. Um, and you also get Jose Sierra, who I don't even know how, but he's been absolutely crushing the baseball in AAA. He's been like 
Barry Bonds in AAA, but in the big leagues, he just can't seem to find it. So honestly, you can flip a coin, hope that he finds it. But if he doesn't find it, this is a no-risk um, investment because he's still one of baseball's best defensive outfielders. And he's a speed merchant. At the very least, you get defensive value for sure. You get speed value for sure. And now you get a no-risk flip of a coin. If he could complete the third tool, I guess, if he could complete the offense part, you just got yourself five, six years of an extremely well-rounded player. Now, if he doesn't get the offense part, again, you still have him as a defensive um, outfielder, and he's just amazing in that department. And you get him for five years for cheap, at least. I think he might be six, because he didn't play too much last year. He was a September call-up. Six years of absolute defense. Um, he's still in his 20s, by the way, I think. And then, of course, Tyler Whitaker, um, outfielder, more outfielders, uh, really young, got lots of time to develop, and got lots of promise. Really high ranked last year, and the Astros took them because they took advantage of their sus suspensions. Uh, loss of draft picks, you get that three package deal. I think, honestly, I'm overpaying a little bit for a rental, but I want Contreras because... I know a lot of Maldi propagandists are in my channel recently and on my Twitter as well. But you have to be honest with yourself. Play calling, if you look at the stat, uh, RCRA, I think it uh, measures how well pitchers do compared to um, how they do with other catchers. Wilson Contreras is positive. Maldi is negative. That means his play calling actually hurts his pitchers. Um, defense. Wilson Contreras leads that in defense to run save too, I'm pretty sure. Don't quote me on that. Might not, actually. Uh, pop time. Their pop time is super similar, actually. So, while the machete has a um, reputation for gunning down runners, Contreras can do that too. Now, in terms of the bats, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to give Maudie credit. He's been crushing it this month. But, um... We have a few few more months left to go. He's not going to keep that up. And in the month of October, we're going to need a catcher to step up. And that catcher, hopefully, will be Wilson Contreras. And then Josh Bell. Josh Bell is where Houston are heavy favorites. Again, nothing is done yet, so I'm not going to say we landed him. But they seem to be um, really high on Josh Bell right now. Um, I am too. Josh Bell is... Incredible. He's a switch hitter. That's pretty nice. I don't think we have a switch hitter, right? Didn't we have one last year? Oh, yeah, Robel and then Toro. Uh, we don't have a switch hitter this year, I don't think. Um, Bell's been crushing it. His way to runs creator plus is amazing. Um, the thing about Bell and Contreras to me is that Maldi is so bad at offense that the difference between Contreras and Maldi and the difference between Bell and Guriel, they're kind of the same. You could basically flip a coin and say, okay, I want to get this player instead of the other, and you'll probably get the same amount of upgrade. But that said, last year, Machete sucked at hitting. He wasn't good. I don't even think his defensive metrics were good last season, too. He was the anchor last year. He had all 2021 to be an absolute black hole an absolute liability, and we didn't do anything about it. Now this year, we're treating him the same way. He's He was doing worse for a big part of the season, and then we just, you know, we, we didn't care, just like last season. But now we have to care because Yuli is also declining. Yuli was amazing last season. I feel like if we had to choose one, I would choose Contreras solely because Maldi already had his chance to be the liability. He can't have two years of being a liability without being replaced. And then we just replaced Guriel right after posting like a 132 weighted runs creator plus. He's still near 100 in his weighted runs creator plus. Um, he, he, I think he deserves his last year of being a liability. If we had to choose, it should be Contreras. But the Astros are going to go for Bell. And like I said, they're both similar upgrades. And if we get Bell, I'm not going to be... Not gonna be upset, obviously. I like the upgrade. I'm just gonna be a little uncomfortable with the fact that we let Maudi slide for two years and we're not letting Yuli slide. But regardless, let's talk about Bell. Um, the Nationals seem to want Logan Cerny. Um, he was part of the Garrett Stubbs trade, 
So you know what? You can have Logan Stern. Um, we could also add, sorry, Jake. Um, but we could also add Jake Myers. Um, he's been kind of struggling, but um, he's obviously, he's had his bright moments. He posted like a 142 weighted runs here plus in AAA last year. Um, it's just, we have a lot of center fielders and it's nothing against Jake. It's just that Chaz has been killing it this season. He's what, a 116 weighted runs created plus center fielder with 85th percentile outs above average. Chaz is really well rounded. So if I had to give major league talent, which the Nationals seem to want with loss of control, it's gonna be Jake Myers. Um, it's funny because last deadline, I said we had the number one AAA prospect because Fangraphs had Jake Myers ranked at number one. Um, at, like at the time, they weren't like the number one prospect, but like at the time, he had the best power ranking from Fangraphs. Um, and everyone was like, oh, the Astros don't have anybody. I was like, we have Jake Myers. We could get Kimbrel if we wanted to. I never said to trade Jake Myers for Kimbrel, um, but I feel like when I explained that to Jake Myers to tell him how I was super high on him when he was in AAA, it gave the impression that I wanted him to get traded last se season. I didn't. Um, but uh, now I do because I really want Josh Bell um, with Chaz just being Chaz I think we could safely let go of Jake Myers we can safely let go of Logan Cerny um, I think that could do it but I always like to be safe I always like to make sure I'm doing you know good I don't want to negotiate when I'm only just giving you guys a presentation so I want to make sure that I bring enough value to get Josh Bell. So we're going to add a third player. That third player is going to be JP France. I'm not sure what his stats are, um, but he's a pitcher. So, you know, let's diversify the positions. Um, I think the value difference between the two players I had said before weren't too off. For a rental, so putting JP France, I feel like just puts us over the top. It's enough value to get him. Not a lot of people are competing for Josh Bell right now, I don't think. So, yeah, I think that should be enough. JP France, um, Jake Myers, and who's who's the first one? Oh yeah, Logan Cerny. Logan Cerny's doing pretty darn good in Double A, I think. So there's that. Um, and then I want to make one more trade. I want Joe Mantiply. He is, is it is his name Joe? I think his name is Joe. Um, he's on the Arizona Diamondbacks. He's a 31-year-old reliever, lefty. We want a lefty. Our bullpen's actually, I think, top three against lefties, despite not having a single lefty. But it would still be nice to have one of them. Um... Mushinsky is in AAA. He's pretty good too. But Mantiply is just amazing. He's 31. Still has six years of team control. But since you're 31, it's not really of a selling point right now. So it's like, yeah, we're not going to really need him until he's 37. So your team control doesn't really mean that much. Um, in exchange for Mantiply, I think we should give up Forrest Whitley. I, I love Forrest Whitley. Um, I just think... His time is done, in my opinion. His time is done. Uh, Man Supply, his time is almost done too, actually. He's 31 already. Um, so the Diamondbacks don't really need to hang on to him too much. Because um, I don't think Man Supply's um, dominance is going to last more than two years. You could get Forrest Whitley. Um, I think that's a fair one for one. Man Supply for Forrest Whitley. Um, Forrest Willie's got a high ceiling. Right now, he's just... he He's struggling to stay healthy. But for a guy like Man Supply that you're probably not going to use, Forrest Willie gets it done, in my opinion. Um, obviously, I don't have a lot of front office experience. Um, so I don't know if any of this is going to sound good. But that's what I think should work. Um, you know, trades are trial and error. The more you see them, the more you're like, okay, this should work, this should work, this should work. I don't have a lot of trials. I don't have a lot of errors, uh, at least not off the field. I have a lot on the field. But, yeah, I think that's what we should do for the deadline. 
Um, and comment what you think the Astros should get, I guess. I don't know. It's What time is it? It's 11.48. Bam. What?